Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to announce Logic 10.7.5 is here. And boy, did they give us a few little subtle updates that are very, very nice to have. In this video, I'm gonna be going over what's changed and maybe some of the new features in Logic 10.7.5. And I'm really gonna emphasize some of my favorite ones and how you can implement that into your productions. So let's get into the video. Welcome to Logic 10.7.5. And in my opinion, it's one of the better updates that we've had since the big overhaul of Logic 10.5. So let's jump into the, some of the new features and some of the upgrades that Logic gave us with this update. Number one, and this one is probably a small one for a lot of people, but for me personally, this one really hits close to home because it's something that has frustrated me for years when I've been using Logic Pro. And that is the ability to preview samples that are 32-bit format within the Logic Pro sample browser. So many of us have downloaded drum kits, sound packs, or loop kits that are not 24-bit like Logic was before. And it was hard for us to preview the sample in order for us to drag them into our project. That doesn't happen anymore. We can now preview the samples from within Logic Pro. This is a really small feature that they've given in this update, but in my opinion, it's one of the better ones. This feature actually hits close to home for me because about two weeks ago, I put out this video on how you can actually convert your audio files to 24-bit so we could avoid this issue altogether. That video is now obsolete unless maybe you can't upgrade to the 10.7.5 if your computer isn't new enough, but if that's the case for you, you can watch the video up here. But for the rest of us, we can rest easy knowing that we can preview our samples in the Logic Pro sample browser. Feature number two of the Logic Pro update, we've been given some new sound packs and drum kits as well as Apple loops. So if I press O on my keyboard here and I go to sound packs, there's this one here, which is called beat tape. And then we also have modular rhythms here as well. Those are two new downloadable packs available completely for free when you update. They've also come with some sounds from the library too here. So if I click this library and I go to beat tape, you can see that these are all of the electronic drum kits that are a part of that pack. And then the same goes with modular rhythms. There's lots of cool sounds in there. So definitely make sure to go and explore those new drum kits and those new sounds. And the next feature that I wanna talk about is the gain tool. This is a tool that is so useful and so simple, and I'm so happy that they added it into Logic Pro. As you can see here, we have these two loops that I just dragged in from the Beat Tape sound pack. Typically, if we wanted to increase or reduce the gain on this, we would have to go over here to the region menu. There's this little gain section where we can either increase it or decrease it. If we go up here to our cursor tool, you can see here that we have gain tool at the bottom. So I can click that and now, and when I hover over the audio regions here, I can simply drag up or down the gain and it's going to change of the audio file. Now take note that when I do this as well, it does it in the region inspector over here too. And it's just such a useful tool for when you're building your tracks and you need to get things to fit together with a quick mix where you're doing some gain staging. This is such a great tool. Also a tip for this, I recommend always using the hotkey T when you're choosing your tools. Now I've set the gain tool here to G because I never use the glue tool. So I'll show you how to do that really quick and I highly recommend doing this because you're gonna wanna make use of the gain tool. So you're gonna go up here to the Logic Pro menu, you're gonna go to key commands, edit assignments. And what you're gonna wanna do is go tool gain. And then you'll see this option here, which is tool menu and it says gain tool. And then I've labeled it as G. On yours, if you haven't done this, you'll have the glue tool be labeled as G. I never use that, so I was okay with taking it off that. If you do use the glue tool, maybe set a different key command, but all you need to do is click this, go learn by key label, press G, and it will reset that to the gain tool. This is super useful for when you're quickly doing gain adjustments on the fly, and then you can go back to your racing regions or whatever you need to do with the tool. The next feature in this Logic 10.7.5 update, stacks on stacks on stacks. And I'm talking about track stacks nested within other track stacks. Previously with track stacks, we were only able to have singular tracks underneath one stack, but now you can nest more track stacks within track stacks. If that doesn't make sense, I'll give you a brief example here. Let's say that we wanted to group these top three in a track stack, and then we wanted this other one underneath another stack for the drums. So we can right click this, create track stack, 
summing stack. And then I can go into this percussion one with this and go create track stack, summing stack. And now we have sum one, which we created with all these three underneath this other summing stack, which includes the dollar bin gem percussion. This makes it a lot easier for grouping drums or instrumentals or vocals or anything really throughout Logic and keeping it all nice and organized with different outputs for different instruments. I think it's an excellent feature and it's a really nice addition to this update. The next feature that I wanna talk about is that MIDI plugins and effects can now be recorded and you'll actually get the raw MIDI data from that. I really like this feature of the update. It's going to make it so much easier for doing things like arpeggios or different chords that you're not necessarily playing yourself and you want to layer it with different instruments. I'm going to just grab a Yamaha Grand Piano. Now if we go here to the MIDI effects section and I do chord trigger, we can do different chord triggers by simply pressing single keys with this MIDI effect. This is an excellent feature you should check out if you don't know. Let's do major six, nine, sharp 11. If I close this and I bring up the musical typing keyboard, we're going to play that chord on the piano simply by pressing only one of these notes. So if I press F, that's that whole chord, but I'm only pressing this note. So watch what happens when I actually record this into Logic. As you can see, all we got for the MIDI data was these two MIDI notes. If we wanted to take that chord and layer it on a different instrument, that would mean that we would have to put another chord trigger on another track. It's just gonna eat a lot of CPU. It's unnecessary. But I'm gonna give you an example of how we can record these MIDI effects into the MIDI data. So I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm going to solo the next one. And right below this chord trigger, I'm just gonna right click and do record MIDI to track here. Now I'm going to do the exact same recording as I just did, except watch the MIDI window when I do it. As you can see, we now have the entire chord based on the chord trigger actually in the MIDI window here. If we want to maybe use a synth or something other than the piano and have that exact MIDI that we recorded, all we need to do is simply drag this to the next track, change the instrument, et cetera, et cetera. This is a really great feature to also use with the arpeggiator. So if I add that one there, let's do something really interesting here that I necessarily wouldn't be able to play over and over again. Let's do complex chord groove seven. Now, if I record this, As you can see, we quite literally have been given this MIDI data from the chord trigger as well as the arpeggiator into our window here. We can select this, we can change the track. This is a great, great feature to use, especially for people that don't play any instruments and typically draw in a lot of notes. This is such an excellent way to create things that are kind of beyond our scope of musical understanding. This next feature is kind of a small one, but again, it's just helpful with workflow and it's also nice to have some extra effects. Now, previously we had what was called the Logic Pedal Board, which had a plethora of effects in it. I think there was 35 different stomp boxes you could use, and it was typically only used by people that were actually recording guitar into Logic or people that actually knew about that. But now these plugins are actually available as standalone plugins as well. And this is really nice and useful because you essentially just got a whole new set of effects plugins that are really, really great sounding. If I go to audio effects and I go to amps and pedals, you used to have to just put the pedal board onto the actual track and then you could drag any of these effects onto here. So I got the Octafuzz, the Fuzz Machine, and the Happy Face Fuzz. Well, I can actually just turn off the pedal board now and I can go directly into Amps and Pedals Stomp Boxes and we have all of these different effects here available that were previously only available as a stomp box inside the pedal board. So again, it's just nice for you to have that flexibility to just grab a simple effect and put it onto the track. Number seven, I didn't actually know about this feature before I saw the Logic Pro release notes in general, but they've added some new presets to it in case you did know about this. This is the Stereo Out Channel Strip presets. So the official wording on the release 
notes was hip hop and electronic presets. If I go to the stereo out here and I do setting, and then I go to factory, you can see all these different presets here that we can add to our stereo out to kind of give us like a rough master if we are making tracks in these genres. I don't actually know what the new ones are because I didn't know about this feature previously. These knock A, knock B, knock C, I'm assuming are gonna be like hip hop, hyped mix, there's anything like jazz, deep punchy lows. So you can test these different channel strip presets and see what's gonna be on the master here. And then you can kind of adjust it to taste. And I suggest you do that. It's a really nice way for you to just have an idea of what to use if you're working in multiple different genres. Now, the last two features that I'm going to talk about are actually some pretty big updates and pretty awesome updates for this one in Logic Pro. However, I personally don't think I'm going to be using them very much just based on the music that I produce. I don't typically record things from an external MIDI controller or piano or anything like that or recording audio. However, if you are someone that does record instruments or audio or anything like that, this is a really great feature. It's called free tempo recording for smart tempo. And I'm gonna show you how to set this up right now. So if I right click and I go customize control bar and display, we have a few options here. And this one is called free tempo recording. So I'll click that one on. And we've been given this button here in the left side of the LCD clock. So if I click this button here and I just play a few things, I'll play a couple different tempos and you can see what I mean. It's gonna conform the project tempo to what I'm playing. So I'll click this. And then I'll click spacebar. And now we've been given all these different options. Now on purpose, I played terribly there, but in two different tempos. And we've been given these options for us to conform the project to those tempos. So apply region tempo to project, apply average region tempo to project. So that's gonna take the two different tempos that I played and probably do the average. Apply project tempo to the region. So that's gonna be the tempo that we've already set to the region. And obviously we can do don't analyze region tempo or change the project tempo if we just wanna do that. Let's do this apply average region to tempo. We'll do apply. And now you can see that it's dropped down this tempo window here. So it's taken the average of what I've been playing and it's done to 93.7. So let's do the same thing again and see what the other options give us. So now I'm going to do apply region tempo to project. So it's going to take the tempo that I played there because I wasn't using a metronome and apply it to our project. And what it's done is conformed the tempo to what I played here, giving us a bunch of different ranges of tempo. So you can see how this can be useful if you are recording instruments yourself. Again, me personally, I tend to use in the box instruments and draw in MIDI notes. So this one doesn't apply to me too much. However, I do encourage you to explore this feature if it's something that you're interested in. And last but certainly not least is another feature that I think a lot of people will like that do have Ableton Live. And what that is, is the ability to be able to sync your projects if you're with Ableton and Logic Pro at the same time. And you can actually trigger files between Live Loops as well as Ableton Live. And it's going to stay in tempo with each other. I don't have Ableton Live, so I'm unable to show you this feature. However, if it's something that you're looking to explore, I highly recommend you do so. And the way to do that is just simply by right-clicking on Customize Control Bar and Display. And you're gonna go up here to Modes and Functions and click sync and you're given this button here which will actually sync your project with ableton live based on the wi-fi that you're both connected to for that if you have someone that's working in ableton live and you're both in the studio and you want to work on something together and add loops in the same tempo you can now do that. Again, an excellent feature for collaboration and producers that maybe typically weren't able to work together in real time can now do so. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Those are just some of my favorite features of the new Logic 10.7.5 update. There's actually a lot more in the release notes, which I will link down in the description for you to check out. I think the more subtle, smaller changes were the ones I was most excited about. However, the big ones are pretty cool as well. So go forth, explore the new Logic Pro update, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. If you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. Make sure to follow me on all socials as well, at It's Tony Holiday. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.